Hello everyone, y'all warmly welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well by God's grace. Y'all welcome to the month of June. This is the science class and my name is Senado. Shall we say a word of prayer? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and your protection. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us into a new week especially bringing us into a new month. We pray and commit the month into your hands, pray that you shall go ahead of us and make every crooked path straight. We ask for your divine wisdom in this lesson. Take absolute control. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray thanksgiving. Amen. So last week, we started off with photosynthesis. We looked at the definition, the equation, the process of photosynthesis. We also looked at the internal part of a leaf. Then we moved on to an experiment to test for the presence of starch in a leaf. Today we are going to look at more of these experiments. And we are going to look at an experiment to show how light, carbon dioxide, and chlorophyll are necessary for photosynthesis. And finally, we'll look at the importance of photosynthesis. So let's get started. We'll first look at an experiment to show that light is necessary for photosynthesis. So we have the aim here. Then let's look at the apparatus. Fresh green leaf, black paper, and iodine solution. Now in the method, we are going to select a fresh green leaf which remains attached to the parent plant. We'll then cover both surfaces, that's the top and, that's the top, and then the lower part of the leaf with strips of black paper or you can also use carbon paper. And this is done to prevent sunlight or sun rays from entering the leaf. The experiment is set up early in the morning before the sun rises. This is usually done because the cells of the leaf are free of starch early in the morning. Later in the afternoon, the leaf is plucked off the plant. The strips of black paper are removed and the leaf is immediately tested for starch. So here we have a diagram of the setup. So we have the leaf here. And in the middle part, we've used a black paper or a carbon paper to cover both sides. That's the upper part and then the lower part. And this, as I said, is to prevent light rays from entering the leaf. Then we stain it with iodine solution. So at the end of the experiment, we observe that the parts that were exposed turned blue-black. But the parts that of the leaf that was not exposed to sunlight did not turn blue black. So in conclusion, photosynthesis did not occur due to the absence of sunlight, though other essential factors such as water, carbon dioxide, and chlorophyll were present. Let's look at the second experiment, an experiment to demonstrate that Chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis. But before we start, let's look at certain terms we are going to use. So we are going to explain certain terms. So we have one, etiolated leaf. Now this is a leaf which is completely yellow or white in color. Variegated leaf. This is a green leaf with yellow or white patches. Now the aim of this experiment is to demonstrate that chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis. The apparatus used are, we have a variegated leaf, test tube, ethanol, water bath, and fresh iodine solution. Now in the setup, that's the start of the, or the beginning of the experiment. Now we have the variegated leaf here, so it is, a green leaf consists the greenish part. Then we have the yellowish or the whitish patches. 
Now, after it's stained with iodine solution, at the end of the experiment, we'll notice that the greenish part turned blue black, while the yellowish part remained colorless. And this tells us about the presence of chlorophyll. That is the part that turned, the green part that turned blue black. Okay, so let's move on to the next experiment. Experiment to demonstrate that carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. The apparatus we are going to use here are a potted plant, conical flask, retort stand, caustic soda solution, which is also known as sodium hydroxide. In the metal, leaves attached to a potted plant are used for this experiment. The leaves are made starch free by placing the plant in a dark room for 24 hours. A leaf from the potted plant is tested for starch to ensure that no starch is present. Now the piece of oil, the leaf stock of one leaf, let's say leaf A, is passed through a split cork so that the leaf blade is enclosed in a flask containing soda lime or sodium hydroxide. The flask is then made airtight by smearing Vaseline at the neck. Now this is to prevent air from entering the flask. And the soda lime or the sodium hydroxide is also introduced to prevent or to absorb all the carbon dioxide that is present. It is then held in place with a retort stand and clamp. A second leaf, that's leaf B, is enclosed in a similar flask but without soda lime. The plants and flax are placed in sunlight for three hours. The leaves are then removed from the flax and detached from the parent plant and tested for starch. Now it will be observed that leaf A remains colorless when treated with iodine solution, but leaf B changed its color to blue-black when iodine solution was added. So in conclusion, leaf A did not show the presence of starch because carbon dioxide was absent, but leaf B did show starch formation because of the presence of carbon dioxide. So here we have a setup of the experiment. Finally, we are going to look at an experiment to demonstrate that oxygen is released as a byproduct of photosynthesis. In the apparatus, we are going to be using beaker, a glass funnel, a test tube, a water plant. For example, you can use a pond weed or you can use hydrilla or elodia. In this case, we are going to use hydrilla. Now, in the method, a beaker is filled with water. A water plant such as hydrilla is placed in it. A glass funnel is inverted in the beaker so as to enclose the water. A test tube is then filled with water and inverted over the stem of the funnel. The setup is placed in the bright sunlight or near a bright lamp. The same setup is made but it is placed in a dark cupboard to serve as a control experiment. Now, a control experiment is a scientific test that is directly manipulated by scientists in order to test for a single variable at a time. So in our observation, we observe that the bubbles of gas start appearing on the surface of the hydrilla leaves. They break away and begin to collect on the inverted test tube. As they accumulate, some of the water is slowly displaced. The gas collected is then tested with a glowing splint, and this is to test for the presence of oxygen. The glowing splint rekindles on contact with the gas, indicating oxygen. In the control experiment, no bubbles are formed, so this tells us about the absence of oxygen. In conclusion, oxygen is only produced as a byproduct when photosynthesis has taken place. So here we have a diagram of
the setup for the experiment. Finally, let's look at the importance of photosynthesis. One, food produced in the form of starch provides energy for animals. Now, the food produced is used by animals in order to carry out their life processes, such as growth, movement, reproduction, excretion, etc. So, oxygen release is used for respiration. And the oxygen is taken in by living organisms to break down complex food substances with a large release of energy. And finally, accumulation of carbon dioxide is prevented by removal of plants. Now, this refers to how photosynthesis regulates the amount of carbon dioxide produced in the Earth's atmosphere. So, this also helps in reducing climate change. Okay, so that brings us to the end of today's lesson. Now you have an assignment to do. Ensure you do it and submit it on time. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourself. Bye.